Hey guys, I found another cool video of literally a person doing a full root canal, a core, and a crown. Like you might be wondering what all these procedures are, but this guy's doing it in this video, and the best part is it's not even a real patient, it's on a model. But this is like the best model I've seen. It's like, it looks like it's a real tooth, but it's actually not. So we're gonna react to it together, let's get into it. So it's kind of just showing the tooth, that's a big, big cavity that's basically looks like it's into the nerve and it's taking up a whole bunch of that tooth structure. So he's just kind of checking it and that decay, you see the cavity part is actually really soft. So when you take that explorer and you kind of feel all that stuff, it's gonna feel really soft. You have to kind of clean away all the soft spot to see how much hard stuff, like how much hard tooth structure is actually available. And that stuff on the other side is just staining and calculi is basically tartar. Like when you get this plaque buildup on your teeth, like all that bacteria kind of gets hardened and then it turns into tartar, which is you need like a professional cleaning to clean away. Okay, so this is the local anesthesia. So that's the actual syringe and that's not how we would numb that tooth so that looks like it's like a lower molar and he's basically numbing it from the tongue side now obviously like it's a fake model like it's not a real mouth but typically we would do with something called an IAN or inferior alveolar block so those lower molars and those lower teeth are all like innervated by one long nerve innervating your jaw and you kind of have to go back like towards your cheek to really target that nerve now Typically when you do a root canal in a case like this, you might have to do some extra numbing around it, but usually that first block is that IAN block. Well, let's get into it. So he's got his burr, he's got his handpiece ready, he's got his foot pedal, and now he's just gonna start cleaning away. So we typically just take this dental drill and start just kind of cleaning it away. So typically like all the walls around that cavity want to be clean tooth structure, and then that way you know like just that middle part, you're cleaning away just the cavity. And you can see here that that cavity is actually going into the pulp chamber. We know that because it actually feels like a dip. But because the pulp chamber is like the middle part of the tooth, is literally just this chamber of like blood vessels and nerve supply. But there's nothing really hard in there. It's gonna feel kind of like a drop. Like you can feel when you actually get in there. Now typically when you get into the nerve of the tooth, you'll see some bleeding because that's where the blood supply is. Now in a case like this, if you don't see any bleeding, that actually means the tooth has died. So sometimes if you have like a really big cavity and you wait too long to get a root canal, that tooth will actually die on you and then you won't see any bleeding. And then you might not even have pain but you could have an like, infection lingering and you might just keep ignoring it for too long. So now he's just cleaning more of the tooth structure away. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. And look, it's getting a lot cleaner and you can see that actual pulp chamber. And that's the infected pulp. That's like the part of the nerve tissue that's just getting infected that he's cleaning away. And now he's taking this called an endo explorer, which is like kind of finding the canal. So you have these little canals inside those roots that are basically feeding the blood supply to the tooth. And that's where you're gonna clean away when you do a root canal. So now everything looks really sound and really clean. You kind of see that like clean looking tooth structure. So that's kind of what it looks like when you do an actual root canal on a real tooth. and fast forward a little bit. So now he's just kind of cleaning the tartar and stuff off the other side of the tooth. So he's kind of like doing a two for one, like it's good to kind of clean that away. But I'm gonna fast forward and kind of skip this part. So he's just basically making it look really clean. So this part is a rubber dam. So this is something to kind of go over the tooth to help isolate it because it's really important to prevent any bacteria or anything from getting inside that nerve supply or inside that can like kind of infect that tooth again. So you want to keep it as clean as possible. And now he's doing the actual root canal. So this is something called an apex locator. So an apex locator is like when you get into the canal, you want to see like, you want to make sure you don't go like too deep and you want to make sure you don't go too short because you want to clean like the whole length of the canal of that root, but you want to be really accurate with how, how well you clean it. So that apex locator literally tells you like how far you are from like the tip of the root and it prevents you from going too far and prevents you from going too short. So he's kind of just mimicking what it looks like when he gets close to that actual like end of the, the root there. So that's, that's actually how you measure. So you take a file, you go in there, and then that apex locator will tell you if you're actually at the tip or if you're too far or if you're too short. 
And then you kind of take that measurement and then you write it down and then you use it for every single canal. And you have to be careful, like, I want to make sure I measure it from the same spot every time because if you change your spot where you're measuring it from, then the whole thing can be off. So now he's doing it for each tooth. And typically we'll use like some sort of arrogant, like you don't want to just go with that canal being super dry like he's doing because those files have a higher chance of breaking. So you want to be really careful. And same thing with here, when you're opening it, like everything's really dry, you want to have some sort of arrogant in those canals. And that's what he's doing right now. He's cleaning and disinfecting with an irrigant. Typically we use bleach. Now you can you probably use some other things along with bleach, but the bleach is the main one. Same thing here, when you're going with those files, like it's a fake tooth, but you're never gonna make it that dry. Like you're not gonna see that much debris. It's gonna be really like, you're gonna have some sort of irrigant in there. Like people use different sorts of irrigants. Now he's kind of cleaning out the canals a little bit more. And then he's drying it. Oh, that's a cool suction tip thing. So these are things called gutta percha. They're basically these like rubber points that kind of go in there and they kind of seal everything off after you're done with the root canal. And then you'll take an x-ray, just kind of check everything, make sure like the lengths are good, your working lengths are good, like the apex locator was accurate. And like, if that looks good, that looks pretty good on the x-ray, then we're good to pretty much go with the finish. So next thing he's gonna do is put a sealer. So when you put those gutta percha points, like those rubber points, you also wanna combine it with like having a sealer around it. And that sealer will kinda just make sure everything gets sealed off to prevent any new bacteria from getting in there. So he's doing that each one. So it looks like he sealed off those front two canals. I'm guessing he's gonna put something called a post in the back one. That's why you can't see the rubber like gutta percha on that back one. Okay, so now he's painting something that actually does two things in one. So this thing actually etches the tooth. So an etchant is like kind of like a soap for the tooth. Kind of cleans it off, kind of makes it like microporous and helps with bonding. And then this is also like a bond in one. I was reading that label. But this will help like whatever filling material, whatever post he puts in there. We're gonna show a post in just a second, but that's gonna help everything kind of bond to that tooth. Okay, so now I'm just gonna fast forward. He's rinsing that off, because you have to sit there for a little bit. Okay, now he's putting the bonding agent. So maybe that didn't have bond in it at first. I thought I read that that first thing had bond. But the bonding agent is basically something to help kind of glue to the actual material that you're putting in there. And then you have to activate it by shining this light on it. Okay, so now he's put, now he's getting ready for the post. So that back canal is the bigger canal. And you always want to put the post in a bigger canal. You might be wondering what a post is. A post is like something that kind of anchors into the root so that when we do the crown, for example, when you fix that tooth, there's not much healthy tooth structure left. So you need some sort of anchor to kind of like another wall to kind of help all the filling material kind of hold onto that tooth. So now he's cementing that post right now. So he's putting the cement in there and then putting this post directly into that canal. And then he's gonna shine his light to kind of activate it. And now he's gonna put his filling material around there. So you can see like, if he didn't have that post in there, there wouldn't be much tooth structure to hang on to. But now it has like the tooth structure and this little post to kind of hang on to. So it just kind of helps make sure that that tooth will uh, stay as strong as possible. And fast forward a little bit, so now he is done with that core. So that filling is basically called a core. A core is basically like a filling that goes underneath the crown. And now he is preparing it for, it says a zirconia crown. That's like the most common material we use on those back teeth. Zirconia is like tooth colored, like ceramic, but it's also really strong. It's like the strongest crown material that we have. So he's just kind of shaving it down. So you wanna make sure that you shave off enough because you wanna have enough depth for a crown. So you wanna make sure the crown is thick enough because if the crown is too thin, then it's gonna break. So you might be wondering why he's shaving off so much of the tooth structure. But if he doesn't shave enough off, then the crown will be too thin and it can break. So he has to shave off just the perfect amount, like not too much where you're taking off unnecessary tooth structure, but not too little where the crown will be too thin. So it's typically like one millimeter all the way around and then two millimeters off the bite because the bite forces are a lot on the crown, so you want the crown to be a little bit thicker, at least on the biting part. And there it is, that's the crown preparation, looks pretty good. You can see that like hollow part is actually where the post is, it's kind of see-through. And now he's taking an impression. So he's putting all that gooey stuff all over the tooth. And then there's other colored gooey stuff that he puts on top, and then we're gonna see how the impression looks. 
So that looks pretty good. If I pause it there, you can actually see like the outline of where all those margins are. So that's something that you'll send to the lab. The lab will kind of pour it up and they'll look at those margins. So if you have a really good impression, it's going to make sure you have a really good crown. Because if your impression's off, then everything could be off and your crown might not fit so well. Nowadays, we use a scanner in our office. Like, we don't really take impressions. We just take the scanner. It's kind of newer. It's like a kind of like takes a bunch of pictures of the tooth and you send it digitally to the lab. I think it works a lot better. And now he is actually cementing the crown. So it looks like the crown is done and he's going to glue it on with this resin cement. So he's getting the tooth ready. He's getting, he's going to glue on the crown. He's gluing on the crown right now. And then there's a bunch of glue that kind of goes excess. Now actually there's a gap between that tooth and the tooth in front of it. Like ideally we want our teeth to be touching each other. Like if you have a little gap, it's going to lead to like a food trap. So in real life, like this would probably, uh, I would not cement that crown. Like I'd send it back to the lab, have them add some more material so that like the teeth are actually touching each other. That's the final result. Looks pretty good aside from that tooth gap, but yeah. I think he actually pushed those teeth together on the model because at first it didn't look like they were touching. Now it actually looks like they're touching. But it's a fake model anyway, so pretty cool video. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked that video. So this tooth actually had three canals. You could see like two on the front and then one in the back. Now sometimes these molars, they have more. I've seen like some that have five canals. And I've heard of stories of molars like having like seven canals so like every case is a little bit different this one is more of like a straightforward one so like if i'm doing a root canal on a molar i would hope it would look kind of like this because the less canals means the less work for me and less work for the patient and if you guys want to see more reaction style videos like this let me know in the comment section below if there's anything else you want me to react to and if you haven't already hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel below and i will see you in my next video if you think sleep apnea only affects people who are overweight or people who snore really loudly then you might want to think again there are so many other things that go into a condition like sleep apnea your jaw size how your breathing patterns are even like how you developed as a kid like or your diet as a kid so today i'm going to break down some of the most surprising causes 